We are like probably everybody else in the country. We are beat up. We are exhausted. Um, way back in the day when I first started this thing called college basketball, you started October 15th. Midnight Madness was the, the 14th at midnight. And, and you started the 15th and you were all excited and ready to roll for that first game. And um, now we start June the 3rd and we're exhausted. Um, we have installed offense, installed Ds. We are um, trying to rebuild a program to get back to the prominence of the, the good old days here at Central Arkansas. And it's been a process, and um, but it's been a good process. We're gonna continue to work, and uh, we finally got some positivity the other day in our last scrimmage. We can't talk about that really, but we had some positivity in that scrimmage, and. Um, um, I think we're heading in a good direction if we can get guys healthy. And um, that, we're not the only one battling that. But, you know, you wonder why you can't – everybody's beat up. There's not a shock. When you, when you start June 3rd, you're going to have some guys beat up. But we're heading in the right direction. We're excited to start the season and um, got an easy way to start. Like, you know, a couple good home games, you know, uh, against the easy opponent. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We're, we're going on the road to play – two high-level opponents. But we're excited. Um, we're getting ready. And, um, but we're excited to hit that play and, and get going with the season and see where this book takes us. I, I know you, you've talked a few times about how long that process has been. What, from you know, March and, and that, your first day here, what's, what's been the toughest part of that process? Um, just not get discouraged sometimes when you hit a wall. First of all, you, you, you got to get a roster. Um, you know, I mean, all three of these dudes sitting up here beside me are going to play a vital role with our basketball team. They were not part of the UCA program last year. So you got to get a roster. You got to get a roster. And then you got to, you know, what we bring, what I bring here is we're going to do this and that. Offensively, we're going to do that. Our defense, we're going to do that. Well, maybe it doesn't fit our roster. So trying to find our, our identity offensively and our identity defensively I already knew that where I was at Huntsville. I already knew that. And that's why we were going to win games and we recruit, recruited to that. It, it's a little bit tougher when you take over a program. So we're trying to find our identity. Um, you know, as, as little things as travel, uniforms, recruiting, practice schedule. We got a practice facility, which is great. Um, everything goes involved with it. And everything that we talk about on the court or in a meeting is new to them. They have no idea what the standard is, what we believe in. So everything we do is new. So you have to explain everything. There's no corporate, corporate knowledge here because they don't know what I want. So everything's hard that first year. And it's supposed to be. I guess if you were to kind of self-evaluate this from you know, being able to recruit a, a roster that quickly, how, you, know, you obviously haven't played games yet. That'll decide. Yeah, I'll tell you in March. I'll tell you how in March how 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 good it went. If you Nothing. Good to kind of guess going into the season. Well, we got, we got great kids. Number one, we got great kids. All right, and and they can be. We, we can coach them hard, and and I don't pull a whole lot of punches. It's not fun sometimes to be at practice, but we got great kids, and we got skilled kids. You know, we all three of these guys sitting up here. Uh, I hope each one of them gets ten to twelve threes every single game up. And if they're able to get 10 or 12 threes up a game, then we're going to be in great shape. So we got we, we wanted skill, we got skill. We wanted basketball guys, we got basketball guys. We wanted good guards, we got three good guards up here. The only issue is, you know, like he's 12 years old, he's 13, and he's 12. I mean, they're really young. Where everybody in college basketball is trying to get old, we got young. And and I don't mind that. Um, I, I, you know, it's just going to be a process. By January 2nd, I've said that by January 2nd, we got to get older. How do you get older? You got to put them through experiences. So, might as well just open BYU and Utah right off the bat and throw them to the wolves. And, and whatever happens, we will get better because of what happened out there in Utah. For sure, no doubt. So, I, I do like, but I, I will say this I'll give credit to the guys that stayed around, uh, they've been fantastic. They've been really good. They've been helpful. They've been good. Um, even the Ben Fox, who redshirted last year, has been phenomenal. Um, so, so 
practices have been really good and some of them haven't been as good and that's just part of the process and we just think we have a book to write every single year and we're just we hadn't even started the first chapter yet just be honest what are the challenges with opening those kind of opponents and what are the positives of that well the challenge is it, it, you know i mean they, they byu's got a uh, i mean supposedly they got a, a top 10 pick in the nba draft next year um they were they were in the top 20 in the country last year i mean they'll be you know it's weird uh i was my first game division one as a ga was at byu with a guy named alan laforce was the head coach and we played sean bradley at byu in in his first game in our first game and we beat byu at byu they're still playing the same place it's gorgeous. Those going, there'll be 18 to 20,000 people in there. It'll be an amazing environment. So how do you get these guys ready? You throw them in that environment. You throw them to play a potential top 10 pick in the NBA draft. And, and we will not back down to anybody at any place at any time. I don't mind it. We had the opportunity to play one more game uh, called Tweedledee and Tweedledee. I won't say the one of them's dumb, all right? Um, and I said, do you want to play Team A or do you want to play Georgia Tech? And they were like, and Team A was not as good as Georgia Tech. We didn't come here not to play Georgia Tech. Like they want, they're crazy. They're, they, but you want to recruit guys that you can coach and they're a little off, like me. These dudes are a little off. Like they want to play, they, they, no doubt. Did y'all want to play Georgia Tech? No doubt. Are, are we scared of BYU? A absolutely not. We know, we respect them but we're going to go fight them. And then on Wednesday, we're going to practice no matter what happens on Tuesday. And we're going to go fight Utah. And we're going to go fight Arkansas. That's how you going to get better if you don't do that. So we're not scared of them. We respect them, but we're going to go battle. And then we're going to get better and improve the stuff that, you know, I watched it. may watch the Yankees last night. I did. We're going to, we're going to, our, we're going to try to avoid losing games. If you whip us, you whip us. But but let's cut out all the, uh, you know, missed free throws, and let's cut out all the missed box outs, and let's cut out all the turnovers, and let's let's give ourselves a chance to win and not give ourselves a chance to lose, if that makes sense. That's what I wanted to ask. You talked about guys coming back. Elias, how, much is, how good is it to be able to rely on somebody like that who's got experience, I guess, in this arena, in this program? <laughs> no, <laughs> it – so there's there's twofold, all right? It, it's great, all right? But sometimes they revert back to what they did last year and the, the year before. You know, you're, you're all, you know, these guys didn't have – they're all new. They didn't have any sense of what Central Arkansas was about. Um, and so they're going to listen. But, but Elias uh, played last year. So, he, you know, we got, he got a little fatigued earlier in an inter-squad scrimmage. We're the only team in the country to have an inter-squad scrimmage and lose. All right, I've never seen anything like it. So the improvement we've made in two weeks has been amazing. But he reverted back to doing some goofy stuff as he did last year. So you're also trying to break habits and change habits. These guys have habits from high school, not you. All right, he's a, he's a transfer. But they've got habits from high school. Those are easier to change than stuff that they've been doing. You know, change an 18-year-old habit, that, that's a little easier than changing a 22-year-old habit. Uh, but he's been phenomenal. He was unbelievable last Sunday in our scrimmage. So he's getting better and better and better. And, um, you know, he's just got to keep on growing up with the rest of them and uh, trying to find leaders with them. You know, he wasn't a leader last year. He was a follower with that team. And making him a leader, it's, it hasn't been easy. But you got some natural leaders up here sitting with me. Uh, how you want these guys to be shooting as many threes as uh, you want you guys, these guys to be shooting threes a lot. And so, you know, talking about this lineup and what it was last year and then what's going to be this year, how essential is that three to creating space on the inside for you guys? Well, it's, it's I mean, we probably led, we, I think we shot over almost over a thousand threes last year at Huntsville. Um, that's what we do. We space the floor and we recruit to that. Uh, we recruit offensively. We coach defensively. We recruit offensively. Um, if I told you we made accidentally, if somebody, rumor has it that we made 19 threes in a scrimmage on Sunday, maybe that got out accidentally. But that's what we're looking to do. Now are we going to make 19 every game? No. But, but the more shooters you got on the perimeter, 
the more space you have on that court to get to the basket, to get to the basket off the bounce, to get to the basket throwing that thing in Elias. It all works hand to hand, just like football. If you want to pass the football, you better be, you better be able to run the football. If you if you want to shoot a th if you want to go inside, you better be able to shoot a, a ball. So if you can shoot a three, you can go inside off the bounce, off the pass. We've got the formula, we got the recipe. They're learning it, they're figuring it out both on the offense side and defense side. So it's been exciting. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. Are we supposed to be there yet? Absolutely not. We'll get there. We'll get there. And that's the great thing about college basketball. January 2nd is, is a, a, a big day for us. You know, that's when our league starts. Whatever happens um, Tuesday and, and Thursday of next week does not cost us an at-large berth. And I, I want you to understand that. We, we understand that. Coach, going alongside that, um, in the offense we saw running today, I saw we saw Elias kind of be playing inside and outside, getting getting looks at the top of the key, but also getting looks at the free throw line for passes, like dump passes down low. Are you see? Do you use Elias? Is he being used more for in that inside role, or are you going to still play him on the outside with a four out line? No, Elias is a six nine perimeter player. I mean, he's a premier player. What you saw today in practice is we spent zero minutes offensively. That was a completely defensive, changing defensive type of, of practice. And that's what we do. You know, we, we don't, I don't have, I had, when I was a 37-year-old version of me, I had an ego. We we're going to play man and look at me and look how tough and masculine we are. Um, I lost that a few years ago, and now I'm a little smarter and wiser. You, it comes with gray hair. Um, we're going to play some man, we're going to play some zone, we're going to mix some stuff up. We're going to play in a full court, we're going to play in a half court. We're going we're gonna to be, by January 2nd, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people wanting to come to Conway, Arkansas. And that's the goal. And, and I don't think it's been like that in the past. And we're going to change the mentality and we're changing the culture. And uh, I'm geeked up about it. And I don't have time to build this program taking a five-year rebuild it's not that's not I don't have time they don't have time college basketball is not done like that anymore we want to win like this year like yesterday Wayne how excited how exciting is it for you to be in a system that has so much shooting has so much yeah. you know just walk through what, what that transition has been like yeah absolutely it's been amazing I mean getting to play with other really skilled players is always a lot of fun playing with another point guard in Braden it's been a lot of fun <clears throat> I'm going to get to play off the ball a lot more than I ever have. I get to shoot a lot of catch and shoot threes. I'm really excited about that. Um, but it's just really fun playing for an intelligent coaching staff and playing with a lot of smart players. Makes it a lot of fun. Tell me what you said during the scrimmage the other day. I want to be Ben Fox. <laughs> ben Fox got to shoot. Ben Fox made a lot of threes. Ben Fox uh, did really good in our last scrimmage. But you wanted to play with Braden because Yeah, I want to play you, with Braden. You, you Braden got sit. Ben a lot of open shots. Braden gets, makes a lot of stuff happen and will get me a lot of shots going forward and I'll get him a lot of shots hopefully. So in the system, I know you played a lot of point in, yeah. in high school. Is, is it going to be more off-ball point, or is it just kind of a whoever It'll has be both. It's it, It'll be know? both. I mean, whoever has it, go make a play, um, be in the right spot, move around, move without the ball. Um, but I can play with the ball in my hands and without it, so I'll be the one and two this year. And hey Coach, with, along with that, what does it mean to have two guys that can step into that one role at any point in time and distribute? Well, I, I've always said this. If you – if if you want a great basketball team, if you could play four point yards at the same time, you'd have a flipping elite team, like elite, like point guards where it's at. And so we're going to play. I, I don't. I don't. We're going to play these two together. You know, at one we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. He got hurt. Braden goes out there and dominates play. We've been talking about it. I'd be stupid not to play. Well, you're going to be small. I don't care. All right, they have to guard us too. We'll figure out ways to guard. And, and so that's what we've always done. We, we like, you stick those two out, you stick these three out there, I, I don't know who can guard them. Now, can we get a rebound? Can we guard the other team? We have to be, we have to be kind of unique on that defensive end and because we're going to be very unique on that offensive end. So they'll be, they'll be playing a lot together. Been no, because half our team's hurt, sure. you know. So I, I don't even know who's going to be playing. I, I don't know if I and and just to be honest, I could give a rip about a starting line. I could care less. 
the only people that care about starting lineup are the guys care, all right, and the parents care. No, 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 no one else cares, all right. I don't care. I, I want to line up to finish the game. I could care less who starts the game, uh, even though that's important. But it doesn't matter to me. So I don't even. I, who knows if? I mean, Lane hasn't practiced in a week and a half. He shot some today. Uh, Ty hasn't practiced in, this week, um, and so we're we're you know Tyler Tyler Lee's out for the year. We we've got a lot of guys beaten battered right now. So I have no idea. Uh, Brayden, I wanted to ask you just kind of the flip side of that that relationship with Lane, just playing with these other guards on the floor. What's that been like, and what are you, your expectations for for that group this year? Well, firstly, the only guy in practice has been the biggest blessing. Um, like being able to compete against him um, has made me better, and I hope I'm making him better um, also. And then also, now that we get to play with each other, um, I think it's going to be very hard for teams to guard us. Um, we're both going to get open shots because of each other. Um, and then also having two guys that can make plays for other people is going to get him a lot of shots. Um, and I think the team will benefit because of it. It's been good. And Ty, I know that you like to shoot the ball too. Yeah. How nice to have a couple guys that can, can facilitate uh, around you the way that they're able to um, I mean, it's wonderful. All I do is pretty much just get to shoot the ball since they do all the work for me. So it's a lot. It's made things a lot easier for me, for sure. How does this program and definitely this staff compare to last year? Now that you've gone through one full year of college basketball. He was at Johns Hopkins last year. Yeah. All right, go. Firstly, I get to play a lot more basketball. Um, Division three still starts October 15th, and I've had June till October to play basketball, which has been like perfect for me. Um, I've loved every minute of it. And then also just being able to play at a place where I'm treated like a king, really. Um, being able to have all the resources we have has made me a better player. Um, I'm grateful for every opportunity because of it, um, and I'm also grateful for the coaching staff that gave me an opportunity to do this every day, and I love every minute of it. What were you thinking when you get the first, I don't know, text or phone call and saying, hey, the coaching staff from Central Arkansas wants you to, to move across country to, to play basketball for them? First, I was like, what is UCA? What even is Arkansas? Like, I never thought in my life I would even come close to like being in Arkansas. Um, I didn't think it was a possibility. But um, the first call I had with Max Schulman um, was great. He's a great guy to talk to. Um, and I love him still to this day, obviously. Um, and then I hopped on a Zoom call with uh, Coach Ryan and then Coach Schulman here. And it just it made me want to come here. Like, um, they, I don't say they promised me um, an opportunity, but they gave me an option. And I think what they offered me was what I wanted. Um, and to be at this level has been great. Just a quick little side note story about this one. His, his original coach who recruited him uh, at Johns Hopkins went to Loyola, Division I Loyola, Maryland. And uh, so I knew that Braden was going to go to school at Loyola. So I called him and tried to convince him not to visit. I was like, don't waste our time, buddy. Don't waste our time coming out here and visit. I know where you're going. He was like, no, coach. I, I, I like almost tried to convince him not to come out here and visit. And he wanted to visit anyway. He committed a day later, and we're awfully excited to have him. Hey, coach, we talked a lot about guard play today, but you know, looking at those big men, you talked about wanting to get rebounds. And um, you've got, obviously, you bring back Glory as a really big returner, but then also Nehemiah getting a lot of run out there. <laughs> talk, just talk about what those big men mean to your lineup and you know how you're going to use them. Well, we're, you know, we played multiple lineups and, and multiple different defenses. So, so Glory, I mean, Glory was one of the better rebounders in the league last year. Um, it's taken probably till right now for me and Glory to like figure each other out. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. Glory can rebound the ball. Glory, I'm not used to having a shot blocker and a rebounder like that. We have switched ball screens, switched ball. We've had to change some ball screen coverages because of Glory. You want Glory around the basket because glory is imposing in there. Um, that's the deal. You know, you, you sit there and complain and this, and what can't guys do? Like, he can't do that. He can't run the Princeton offense. He can't do that. Well, after a while, you just change, you flip the script. What can he do? And he can run, and he can jump, and he can block a shot, he can rebound the ball, and he can ball screen for these guys and sprint to the basket. Every time he sprints to the basket, we're either going to throw it to him or somebody's going to help him or going to play behind. Like what Glory can do is some really neat things. Now, Nemo is a completely different human. 
Nemo is a six foot ten, two hundred. <laughs> six foot ten, two hundred and fill in the blank pound kid. All right, who is so flipping skilled, and if he gets in shape, the guy's going to be amazing. But it's a big if. He's got to get in elite shape. If he gets in shape, he will help us this year. If, but I can't say when because I'm not sold yet. But if he does, then we, I mean, you saw him out there today. I mean, he was dunking on Glory's head. He was pitching right there. He's make. he looks like Magic Johnson some, and he looks like um, Camille Johnson some. Do you know who Camille Johnson is? I don't either. I don't, I know who Magic is. I don't know why I talk to this. <laughs> 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 you talked about wanting to win year one. What does a successful first season look like for you? I'll let you know in March. I, I don't know. I know this. I know we're aiming here. I, I'm not putting. I'm not putting numbers on. I, I'm just going to tell you if we don't win it, I'm going to be disappointed. So you think, well, he, yeah, these people are nuts. Absolutely, it's what we do. If we don't win, I'm going to be disappointed. And then we can look back afterwards and say, hey, man, but you didn't win it, but that was good. Or you did win. So I, I don't know. If your goal is not to win the league and go to the NCAA tournament, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why would you would be doing this. Well, I, hey, we're going to try to have a winning season. No, we're not. We're going to try to win the league. Whatever that happens, well, however that looks, that's what we want. And then we can talk about whether it is a good year or bad year after the season. What's going to be the key to that? The key to it is, is to, I would say this, really important. The key is can we stay together? Can we stay together during BYU, Utah, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Georgia Tech? And I mean, hey man, I mean, we got, I mean, easy not. I mean, you got UNC Astros playing the NCAA tournament coming in here. You got CMO playing the NCAA tournament two years ago. They're coming in here. I mean, you're at Little Rock, you're at Pound. We, we, we got, we got a brutal schedule. Good. Good. Like I've said many times, if I was worried about my record, my record, I would have stayed in Alabama. Not worried about my record. Worried about doing something really cool with this basketball program and for this university and for this community. Uh, you, you and Wayne are both had tons of success in high school mm -hmm. and playing in state title games daily every year. What did, I guess, how is that going into college, playing for a, a program that kind of has similar expectations at, at this level? Um, I mean, if you ask Coach Showman uh, who he recruits, he recruits winners. And um, I think he's done that with every person on the, on the whole team. I mean, we're all winners. Um, so, I mean, with the success we had in high school, I think that we both knew playing AAU that we liked playing with each other. And the fact that, um, I mean, first off, he makes his, I, I make his life easier, he makes my life easier. You know, I shoot the ball, he, he passes the ball, he shoots the ball. We both create for each other. I mean, it's been great. Um, I mean, it's just been wonderful playing for this, this staff and, and the way they think, the way they shoot the ball, the way they like for us to shoot the ball. Um, so, I mean, it's just been wonderful. What's been maybe the biggest difference, hardest transition uh, from high school to this level? Um, I think one thing is the pace. It's a lot faster, it's a lot you know, quicker. Um, I've had to get in shape. I've had to learn how to play a lot faster and make decisions on the fly. So I think that's been the biggest, the biggest um, difference. You didn't have a scooter in Lake Hamilton, did you? I didn't. I had a car. I still have a car, but I mean, the scooter has helped a lot in college. <laughs> you can see Ty riding down the street on a scooter. Coach, <laughs> has, has Tony given you any advice coming into this year? When? I mean, he, you know, I mean, he came in. Tony came in. Tony, we're talking about you. Tony came in, in in a tough situation in one big first year. So he just said, do what I did. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to win big. Uh, he's done, I, I tell you what he can really do, he can really coach. He's, he can really coach. Um, we watched him practice and I watched him play last year. You know, when, when we were looking, uh, we got an opportunity to watch um, them play, I guess, the W. No, it was the A Sun tournament game in here when I started first understanding about Central Arkansas and saw what type of product he put out on the floor and kind of the environment. It was really cool. It was really cool. 
we, we, hopefully we can do our part. They, he's done his part. Football's doing their part. Volleyball's doing their part. Soccer's doing their part. Hopefully we can do our part. I, I want this, but uh, Cole McCormick, I mean, obviously you get this job, and then you start recruiting these guys, some of the other transfers, recruiting guys back to the program. He's the one guy who you already had committed to you. Yeah. Just had to change where he's getting the mail sent to. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we had been recruiting Cole. I'm a Tennessee guy. He's a Chattanooga guy. We, we love Tyler Lee from Knoxville, who was Mr. Basketball, who messed up his knee already here, and Cole McCormick. Cole McCormick came down and, and played with our kids, and we said, he's the Lipscomb guy. We have no shot at getting in. He's going to Lipscomb, for sure. You can just look at it. Um, and with how life is, with how life is, with how these guys get, high school guys are not getting recruited at the level that they used to, because everybody's in the portal, um, we got lucky and signed Cole because no other Division ones came. And so we signed Cole. And, and so when we came out of here, it was a no-brainer. You know, let, listen, Cole made four threes the other day and was phenomenal. He is too goofy to understand the, the moment, all right? He'll knock your teeth out. He'll box out. He doesn't know any different. He's just, he's just Cole. And so he can make a shot, he can rebound a ball, he can go dunk it on your head, and he's really, really strong. And he plays his role, he's not, he doesn't try to, he doesn't try to do too much, he's just cold. He's just cold. He's just a good old East Tennessee boy. Sorry, Coach. Talk about, talk, let's talk about DJ just a little bit, seeing him <laughs> get a little bit of run with that first unit as well. You know, him, him being one of your D1 transfers, just talk about what he's meant to this lineup. Well, DJ, DJ, comes in with huge expectations. Uh, he, played, he played in the FIBA under 20 on the team from Portugal. He's played an international schedule. I mean, he went to San Jose and he went from playing the three to playing the four to they had injuries to playing the five. So he was so excited to play the five, he gained 25 pounds. He looked like Nemo out there. He looked like Nemo in a Portugal skin. Um, and he couldn't move. He wants to be a three. Hey man, then you're gonna to have to lose weight. And he came in here, he tweaked his knee early, and, and now he's starting to get in shape. He was unbelievable. He God, he was amazing on Sunday. He 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 has gone bang, 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 and he is now he can he passes it, he's got great size. He's six eight, he's a six eight three man. And so, you know, you put a six eight three man with two little peewees, no offense to both of you, because I love you both, but two little guys then that counteracts having two littles out there. So, so having him out there will help us playing, playing man, playing, playing zone, but he can really pass it and he can make a shot. We can also post him up. He's, he's a unique dude out there. All right, well, let, let, me, let me tell you this. All right, first of all, I love Javion. Uh, the first time I came in here, um, Javion gave me a tour and he didn't smile. And he looked at me like he wanted to kill me. Uh, now he's part of my family. I love the guy, but Javion at this moment is, is ineligible. All right, so Javion's ineligible uh, due to an NCAA rules infraction, okay? Um, we will work, we are working with Javion and the NCAA to get him reinstated. When that happens, I don't know. He may be out for a semester, he may be out for the year. We'll let you know and we can talk about that at that time, but right now he's ineligible. But he's still, he's able to practice. He will be able to travel some with us. He is, I want to kill him, all right, number one, because he is an amazing kid and an amazing player. Um, and uh, hopefully he'll be back with us sometime in the future. How about that? No, Lane kind of touched on it a little bit, but Ben Fox is the only other one coming back from obviously redshirted last year. How, how do you think that kind of fits into his development? I know. They, they had a lot of guys in that position last year, so maybe. All right, I, 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 this will be Ben Fox. Can Ben Fox play? Yes. Can Ben Fox play? Can Ben Fox play? The only guy that doesn't think sometimes that Ben Fox can play is Ben Fox. And so Ben Fox is confidence away from being unbelievable. He, had, he made six threes the other day. He was dominant out there. He's athletic, can move, he's competitive. He's a really good player. And, and, but. You know, he just got, he's got to get there.
You know, like it's it's crazy. Ben Fox has been around. He's a little rock guy. He's been around. He's been around. He's just a freshman, just a freshman, just a freshman, just a sophomore. I mean, you know, the, we're 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 really 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 young. You know, DJ's a fresh. I mean, a sophomore. Mike's a sophomore. We're really 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 young. Nemo, a freshman. So so if we can if we can keep getting better and do what we do, and keep these guys around. Um, I, I promise you we'll, we'll, we'll have a chance to do something really special here. And people, I'm telling you, will not want to come out here and play us. And I cannot wait for that day.